you've been deceived. See, I want to ask you, why do you think you're a Christian if you call yourself a Christian? You know, have you been born again? Jesus said, unless a man be born again, you will not even see the kingdom of God. What does it mean to be born again? Well, Jesus said, well, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, all that are in Christ are a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Yes, Jesus Christ, He will cleanse you. He will wash you. He will sanctify you. He will justify you in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. But you've got to repent. God's forgiveness is conditional. You know, He wants to save everybody. But it's up on you. You've got to choose. You've got to choose to repent and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Yes, we have free will. I had someone other try to tell me that we didn't have free will. And they were trying to make me change my mind about me not having free will. I mean, that's an utter contradiction there in and of itself. But yes, the Bible says to choose this day whom you're going to serve. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Jesus said, if any man wants to come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. So we're out here today to, to plead with you, turn from sin. We're ambassadors for Christ pleading with you to be reconciled back to the Father through His Son, Jesus Christ. Oh, there's a day called Judgment Day. A day called Judgment Day. We have an appointed time to meet Almighty God where He's going to judge us for every thought, word, and deed. Are you ready to meet God? If you died right now, and you had to stand before the Holy One of the Bible, what would He say to you? Would He say, well done, my good and faithful servant? Or would He say, I do not know you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. What would God say? Well, ask yourself. The Bible says to examine yourself. Test yourself to see if you be in the faith. To see if Jesus Christ be in you, lest you be reprobate. So today I ask you to uh, examine yourself. Are you a Christian? Are you living holy? Do you know Jesus Christ? Have you been born again? If you say no to those, then, then I'm very concerned for your soul. Because the Bible says that most people, most people are going to uh, end up in the lake of fire. Most people are going to go to hell because they reject Jesus Christ. Because they reject Him with their sin. So you either love God and you hate your sin, or you love your sin and hate God. That's the only two options. You're either a saint living for the Lord Jesus Christ, or you're a sinner living for the devil. See, the Bible says that the devil has taken you captive, and you've been snared. But we're out here to plead with you that your eyes might be open, that you might come to the knowledge of the truth, that you might be convicted of your sins. Oh, I pray that the Holy Spirit will convict you. I pray that He will move upon you, that you can't sleep tonight, that the words of the preacher will haunt you. Are you ready to meet God? I am. I hope so. You have a beer in your hand. You have a beer in your hand. What are you doing, sir? What? That's not a very good uh, example for Jesus Christ. Jesus wants you to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Not to be a drunkard. You know, the Bible condemns drunkenness. It says drunkards will not inherit the kingdom of God. It says fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. It says homosexuals will not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, you have to repent. Oh, what is repentance? It means it's a turning of will. It means if you're sinning, you stop it. You turn around and you follow Jesus. Are you either living for your sin or you live for Jesus Christ? What are you living for? Everything outside of living for Jesus is vanity. Vanity of vanities. You know, like I said, that's that is uh, what I think. I think the biggest. I think the yes. Oh no, I can't be quiet. Oh no, I can't be quiet. Uh, that's why that's that, there's a perfect example of what I was just talking about. That guy wanted me to be quiet. Could, how could you be a Christian and be quiet in a crowd of people, knowing that most of them are going to end up in hell? Because that's what Jesus said. The main difference, the main difference, I believe, between guys like us, street preachers like us, and the rest of the lukewarm, the Chris lukewarm, self-professed Christians out there, you know why we're like this and most lukewarm Christians walk around silent and blending in with the world? We actually believe hell is real. We actually believe hell is real. If you claim to be a Christian, uh, do you actually believe hell is real? 
because uh, we're getting we're getting a little tired. It gets a little stale going out to these events and having spending all night having self-professed Christians telling us we're doing it wrong. We're turning people away. This is too extreme. Be quiet. Blah blah blah. Can you imagine? I I believe if any Christian who says that. Uh, I'm telling you right now, they don't believe hell is real. I'm telling you right now, any Christian who would tell us that this is too extreme does not actually believe hell is real. You know who's not complaining about our method? You know who, you know who uh, would never complain about our method? The people in hell. The people in hell would never complain about our method. I guarantee you, I guarantee you that there is no one in hell complaining about a guy who, uh, during their life, a guy who stood on a box and talked with a little microphone and held a piece of vinyl with some words on it as being too extreme. Nobody in hell is complaining about this method. Nobody in hell would actually think that this is too much. If you actually believe hell is real, you would think this is, this is nothing. This is nothing. You know, when Jesus spoke about the rich man and Lazarus, and uh, Lazarus the beggar was in Abraham's bosom when he died, and the rich man was instantly in the torments of hell, and that rich man cried out for a drop of water. He's tormented in the flames. But what else did he want? What else did that rich man want who was burning in hell? He wanted someone to go and warn his five brothers not to go to that same horrible place. That man in hell, Jesus' own words, tell us that that man in hell was crying out that someone would go and warn his five brothers not to go to that same horrible place that he was in. Uh, let me tell you something. If God allowed, if God allowed that rich man to be out of hell for two hours and he plopped him down here in Hickory, North Carolina at the Oktoberfest, what method of evangelism do you think that rich man would use? Do you think that rich man would use his two hours outside of hell to just walk around and build relationships with you and to hand you a bottled water in hopes that you might ask him about Jesus or give you a, a flower and a Jesus loves you sticker? No. No. I believe that if God allowed that man, you want to talk about a good street preacher, that's the guy we need. That's the guy we need out here with us. Oh, if God would allow that man, that rich man who is in hell, that wanted his five brothers warned about this place, oh, if God God would let him out of hell for two hours and plop him down here at Oktoberfest. Oh, I say, dude, here is my box. Here is my microphone. Give them the message. Now you'd hear some preaching. Now you'd hear some judgment. Yeah. Now you'd hear some hellfire preaching because that guy would have experienced it and known. That guy would be a better street preacher and probably bring more people to salvation than all the pastors in this town combined. I'll bet you that guy's preaching would shake, would shake the foundations of this town and of this festival. That, because hell is real. Because hell is real. So I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you claim to be a Christian and you're not sharing your faith with this lost and dying world, you better realize, Christian, there are people in hell who care more about lost souls than you do. What a shame! What a shame that would be! Because Jesus' own words tell us that that rich man probably represents pretty much everybody in hell, all remembering all the family and friends and co-workers that are still back and alive on earth, remembering them and just hoping, hoping. They know there's no more hope for them, but they're hoping that someone would tell their sister, brother, spouse, someone would tell them not to go to that horrible place. So if you think this is too extreme, I'm telling you, you don't believe hell exists. Because man, if that guy could preach, get out of hell and preach for two hours, he'd shake the foundations of this town, lives would be changed, because that guy believes hell exists, he would have experienced it. Who's ready? Who is ready? Who's ready? As entered into the heart of man, things God has prepared for them that love Him. Oh, I love that verse. Eye has not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man, things God has prepared for them that love Him. 
down. Heaven is going to be unimaginable. You cannot even imagine how awesome heaven is going to be. But I would also say hell is going to be the same. You cannot imagine how horrible hell is going to be. It's a place of weeping, wailing, gnashing of teeth. Jesus said it's a place where the worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. He said in the book of Matthew, he said, the Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all those who are men and all those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into a furnace of fire. Jesus, that's what Jesus said, into a furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth, but then the righteous. That's us, hallelujah. Yeah. This excites me, buddy. Yeah. And the righteous will shine forth as the sun right. in the kingdom of their father. That's right. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Do you have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit's telling you today? Or the Bible says, when the Spirit talks to you, when the Word of God is ministered to you, don't harden your heart in your rebellion. I'll say when you hear the Word of God, you have one of two options. You can either harden your heart in your rebellion, continue on in your sin, or you can actually humble yourself before the mighty hand of God. You can actually submit. You can actually repent and turn to God. That's what you young ladies need to do tonight. You ready to get right with God? Jesus Christ wants to save you. He wants to give you everlasting life. I'm a Satanist. Oh, uh, a Satanist? That's stupid. Why would you be a Satanist? That's one of the stupidest things you can do. The Lisa's devil honest. hates you. Yeah, at least she was honest. But that, that's stupid, though. Why, why would you serve Satan? Satan hates you. The Bible says the devil, he come to kill, steal, and destroy. Now, how does he do that? By the means of sin. See, if he can get you to get drunk, you might drive and die. If he can get you to fornicate, well, you might get a HIV or some STD. He come to steal, kill, and destroy your life through the means of sin. Oh, but hallelujah, Jesus Christ, he came to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Oh, that, there is no greater life than a holy life lived for Jesus Christ. Right. Oh, you may have to endure persecution from uh, ungodly sinners. You may have to endure tribulation. Oh, but still, it's a much, much better life than a life of sin. All these sinners think they're really living it up. Oh, getting drunk, sleeping around. But in the end, when they have to face a holy God and give an account for their life, they're going to regret every single sin. You know, I regret every single sin I've ever committed. There's no one girl I slept with that I'm like, I'm glad I slept with her. No, I regret every single time that I sinned. Every lie I ever told, every time I got drunk, I regret it. I wish I could have lived a holy life from when I was little. I wish somebody would have told me the truth when I was a wicked sinner so I, I might have uh, escaped some of the sins that I committed. But, you know, uh, I got forgiveness, though, because I repented. So you can get forgiveness for your sins, sir. You no longer have to live in sin. See, the Bible calls Christian saints. What Paul wrote, he wrote to the saints of Ephesus, to the saints of Corinth. Oh, you don't have to be a sinner no longer. That's good news. But the Bible says, awake unto righteousness and sin not. The Bible says, he who sins is of the devil. The Bible says, the children of God and the children of the devil are made manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God. Are you a child of God or the child of the devil? Have you been born again? Do you know Jesus Christ? He can save your soul. If you not. Hallelujah.